So several months ago, I did a video about signs that you really shouldn't buy something. And some people suggested that I do an opposite on how to know when it is okay. But before jumping in, this video is sponsored by Chime, which is an award-winning financial app and debit card that millions of Americans use to manage, save, and spend their money. It can provide you with the resources to make smart money moves that promote financial well-being and a general sense of peace of mind. When you sign up for Chime, you can take advantage of many features like fee-free overdraft up to $200 on debit card purchases, and eligible members can get cash withdrawals with SpotMe. It's like overdraft protection, but better. You can also get your paychecks, benefits, and stimulus checks up to two days earlier with direct deposit. And there's even an option to block your card in a single tap if it goes missing or if you notice charges that aren't yours. As a bonus, the Chime Credit Builder Secured Visa Credit Card can help establish, build, or rebuild your credit. And that's with no annual fees, no interest, no credit check, and no minimum security deposit, which is required with most secured credit cards. But the features don't stop here. You can also get live customer support in the app via email and over the phone. You'll get access to over 60,000 fee-free in-network ATMs. Plus, with Chime, there are no monthly fees, no maintenance fees, and no minimum balance requirement. Bottom line is that Chime lets you feel good about your money, and I will include a link below so you can learn more and sign up. So one way to know if it's okay to buy something is to consider how you feel in that moment. Your emotional state is a huge deciding factor in whether now is the right time to buy something. And you probably already know this, but shopping, it can release feel-good hormones. So if you're feeling sad, anxious, or depressed, retail therapy, it can make you feel better. But the happiness doesn't last. Not only that, when you're in an emotional state, your judgment can get a little off, in which case all reasoning might go out the window and you could go overboard and spend more than intended. So as a general rule of thumb, make it a point to only spend money when you are feeling calm and relaxed. That way you're able to make decisions with a clear head. Also consider when you first considered buying the item. This is a very important question to add to your arsenal. And if you get into a habit of asking yourself this, you might be able to curb a lot of impulse buying. I've spoken a lot about being intentional and deliberate when it comes to spending money. And I do feel that it's okay to treat yourself. We work hard and there's nothing wrong with splurging or having a little fun. But splurging should not be an excuse to be impulsive or reckless because that can be damaging in the long run. So before buying anything, seriously consider when you first thought about making the purchase. And if you first considered it maybe weeks or months ago, then yes, now might be the right time to buy it. But on the other hand, if you just considered buying an item maybe a day ago or even a few minutes ago, you might want to hit the pause button and give yourself some time to think about it and make sure that it's something that you really want. The big question is how do you plan to pay for this purchase? And another indicator that it's okay to buy something is that you have money in your bank account to pay for the item today, not next week or when you get paid. Even if you're using a credit card to earn miles or points, you should be able to pay off the balance in full. You don't want to get into a habit of buying stuff with future money because once the pattern starts, it can be very difficult to break and you could dig yourself into a hole where you have to play catch up. Also, have you checked your current inventory for similar items? In some of my past videos, I've spoken about accidentally buying duplicates. And one thing that plays a huge role in accidentally buying something that you already own is not taking a moment to pause and really think about the purchase or think about what you already have at the house, which tends to happen when you're impulse shopping. So if you're in the store and you see something you wanna buy, but it's an unplanned purchase, don't buy it until you go through your own items. And this has two benefits. One, you might realize that you already have something similar. And two, once you leave the store and the moment passes, the desire for the item will likely weaken. It's also okay to buy something if it doesn't affect your finances. At the end of the day, you should never buy anything if it's going to have a negative impact on your money, even if it's only a minor impact. Buying an item should not interfere with your ability to pay a bill on time, it should not result in long-term credit card debt, and it shouldn't prevent saving money. It's also okay if it's a good time to make the purchase. Timing is also a big factor because depending on what you're buying, waiting until certain times of the year can help you get a better price. For example, if you're looking to buy a new TV or maybe upgrade your sound system, aside from Black Friday, you can usually find good deals on this equipment around the Super Bowl. I also read that the best time to buy fitness equipment is in January, March is a good time to buy grills, and September is a good time for mattresses. 
Also consider whether there is a return policy. But even if you go through all the tips and you decide that now is the right time to buy something, you might still have some reservations. You might be someone who deals with money guilt. So even when you're being responsible, you might go back and forth and feel weird about a purchase. This isn't something that you can overcome by snapping your finger. So instead of avoiding purchases, if possible, only buy items that you can return. This way, if you're still feeling guilty, maybe after a week or two weeks, you can return the item and get your money back. So that's all that I have for you guys today. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And also subscribe if you like personal finance and you want to see more videos like this. I typically post every weekend. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in a few days.